Good morning. How are you guys? I uh, hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday, Memorial Day, so first and foremost, let's get that out of the way. Um, happy Memorial Day. Thank you for those of you who have served in our military and uh, you know, certainly want to remember those who didn't make it home. few other things to get out of the way before we quite obviously are going to the field today. Um, Friday, I didn't make a video because it rained all day. Um, we had about a half inch. Ooh, look, a little low. We need some, we need some oil. So we're going to top off the engine oil here. Um, but we had about a half inch of rain on Friday. It was a cold, crappy day, but we got some rain. So that was good. So the crops are, are looking decent, although it's been cool. And uh, hopefully this week it warms back up and things take off again. I uh, woke up this morning at about 3.30 with a puking three-year-old, so we've had a rough morning, so that's, that's no good, so hopefully by the time you guys are seeing this, he's feeling better. So we are going to be back in the fields today. We're going to go put a little bit of anhydrous on. Uh, we've got this bar kind of all fixed up, I guess. Uh, we did that little bit of work to it last week, put some new... Uh, opener blades and boots on those rows down there that were leaking behind the tires. So we'll see if that makes much of a difference here today. Um, we've got a few tanks lined up. We had Brock haul tanks on Friday while we were um, rained out because we knew that we would probably be in the fields today and they're closed for Memorial Day. So we can do, I don't know, a couple hundred acres, I think. We've got, we got quite a few tanks here. So this weekend, my sister and brother-in-law, uh, Scott, who was in the military, was overseas, um, just came home a, couple, a week ago. They came down to visit everybody. I was really hoping to catch him before they left here this morning and put him on camera, but they're gone already. So I missed that one. Sorry. Anyway, um, we've got a couple passes here to do, and then the rest of what I've got left to do in this field, because I already did the end rows, um, is basically our plot. So we're going to set it at a set rate and uh, just put the same rate in, and on the entire plot to keep everything even and fair. It still doesn't seal quite perfect behind those duels, but I think those uh, the, the blades and uh, boots did help. I think it do a little better job. Can you guys see how pretty that corn looks out there right across them rows? Beautiful. It's pretty small yet, but it looks really good. I have reached the portion of the plot over here where I'm doing my nitrogen rate trials. So that last pass there, I actually did not put any nitrogen on. I ran the bar through the ground so that it's got the pass. It's still got the little bit of tillage effect. Everything is the same except for uh, that got zero pounds of nitrogen. This pass, we're putting 125 pounds of nitrogen on. The next one, we're going to do 250. Uh, just another one of them little experiments and things that we're trying. I already know what the results of this one are going to be, but it's a pretty uh, uh, good visual and there's a lot to be seen from it because that one there will show up like a sore thumb here in about a month and a half. Nitrogen is what makes the corn have that nice dark green, just pretty beautiful color to it. And so where we don't put the nitrogen on, that corn is going to turn yellow. The bottom leaves will start firing up the plant because it's going to run out of nitrogen, so it's going to steal those nutrients from the lower leaves in the plant to help try and produce an ear. And my guess is it'll yield somewhere in the 75 to 80 bushel range where the 125 pounds of N will probably, we might get 150 out of it, and this one where we're putting 250 on should be well over 200. Now these two may be a little bit closer depends on the weather and the rainfall and all of that stuff, but um, it makes a difference. The general rule of thumb with nitrogen applications, uh, historically at least, has always been you want to apply one pound of nitrogen for every bushel of corn that you produce. So a pound of uh, N per acre to produce a, a bushel of corn. And um, while there are people doing better than that, and we do better than that in a lot of time cases and places and stuff, that's still kind of my target and what I'm shooting for is, is about a pound of N per bushel 
produce. Now, we are putting a little bit on with our starter, and you can figure that your soil is going to mineralize some nitrogen out of the organic matter that is in it. The problem is that we don't know how much, and we don't know how much that's gonna vary from place to place, so uh, it's a little bit hard to figure. But um, that's, that's kind of how we determine our rates. You guys have seen me make up my prescription maps and know that I go anywhere from 110 to 210 uh, pounds of N on our side dress. And for the rest of this field here and what we're doing now, I put on um, 190 pounds, so for reference. All right, that field is done. So we're gonna head down the road. We've got 46 acres down over that way. We're gonna go do, I think Brock's here, so I'm gonna see what he's up to. Phil is actually getting the bean planter out. Uh, we've got a field that he noticed we have quite a bit of goose damage, geese damage, however you, whatever you say there. And so he um, he's gonna go replant some beans because the geese have basically cleaned them out. Brock's here helping Phil get that planter ready to go. Um, so I talked to him for a minute. He's going to move tanks around for me and help with all that stuff. Um, before I head to the next field, I'm just going to go in the house. Uh, my, my wife brought Brayson, my sick three-year-old, out to the farm here because, um, well, they were supposed to have swim lessons today. And clearly, he's not going swimming, but his brother still is, so my mom's watching him. I'm going to go check on him, see how he's doing. Working on this next field here. This tank is just about empty. Brock brought me a set of doubles over there. That'll be enough to finish this field because you can do about 40 acres with a set of doubles. We've already done nine, only 37 to go here. So that'll work out pretty well, actually. I was having some uh, issues with the rate not holding when I was going. I mean, even at six or seven miles an hour, it was uh, not holding the rate. And I had one or two rows that says weren't getting the even application. so. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. I thought maybe I tripped one of the uh, safeties on the tank, but they did not. So I'm bleeding the coolers in the system out. I want to pull the screens out right in there. There is a uh, screen filter kind of that sometimes those can get plugged up with uh, rust scale and stuff from out of the inside of the tanks. And uh, we're going to see if if uh, those are clean or not. And if that's our problem, great, because then I know what it is. If not, we'll have to keep digging, I guess. No, uh, I don't think that could possibly be the problem, could it? Holy crap, look at it all. Hold on, I'll show you. There's a magnet in here, so it's, yeah. All that stuff. That might be part of the problem. Brick's got the other one apart. The screen won't even come out with this one. Yeah, it'll come. Well, we'll try that. Well, I know I shouldn't complain, right? But, I mean, that helped a little bit, I think, but it was not our issue. Um, we're, yeah, see, we're, we're trying to put 190 on, and it's just, sometimes it's not able to hold that rate, even only at uh, 6.7, six and a half miles an hour. So I think actually what we're seeing is just the cooler temperatures outside. Uh, the tanks are under less pressure and therefore uh, it doesn't flow as fast. So we've got to slow down to get our rates. Well, either my flow meter is super way messed up, which I think is not right, or that tank wasn't full, those tanks, because I was supposed to get done with this field pretty easily. And it's empty. And I've been having all those low rate, pr low pressure issues, so I don't know. I got five acres left, but I don't have a tank here, so we're going to have to run back to the farm and get one. Fortunately, it's half a mile away. Well, we got that field done. Uh, Brock's back. He's hooking on to that other set of doubles that we've got and going to bring them over to the next field for me. Uh, this field's only got, I don't know, 30, 36 acres, something like that. So. The rest of this tank, which I didn't use very much of, and the doubles should do all of this field, and hopefully the next one that's like 18 acres. So I don't have to have another tank drug up there. So he had a fire call, which is why he couldn't bring me that tank. Uh, not the last field when that other one ran empty and it wasn't supposed to. So anyway, keep moving. Well, this corn's a little too small for me to be out here, actually. I'm in that uh, mucky black dirt. You can see that pass right behind me there. 
dirt, dirt is so soft that it was it was pushing and uh, it was covering some of that corn up. I don't like that at all. So I'm slowing way down trying to prevent that. I could adjust the pressure on those gangs, those two little uh, gauges and dials right there. The problem is, once I get out of there, I get in this yellow hard stuff that I need the pressure. So um, I'm not getting out to change it twice on every pass. This would be a great field to have a true set uh, 2510 bar. So on the newer ones, they have a uh, system that you can automatically control that down pressure right from the computer screen in the cab or even have a prescription set for it to automatically change as it goes through the field. Similar to what's on our uh, disc ripper on that 2730, but this bar does not have that feature. Interesting comparison of what herbicides can do for you. Not sprayed? Sprayed. No tillage done here this spring. Yikes. Okay, I'm on the last pass of this field here. Um, I've got another field that's that way up the road, uh, about 20 acres or a little less to do. But I'm gonna head back to the farm when I get this one done. Cause I'm still having rate controller issues where it just isn't wanting to put out very much or to get enough flow. Um, there is a way to kind of clean out those um, super coolers there, the Raven coolers. And I had to do that last year on the uh, 2510 that we demoed. So I'm gonna go and try and do that. I'll show you when we get there how that all works. But basically we take the vapor lines off and the refrigerant line and, and blow air through it to try and clear it out. So just, it's worth a shot. See if that helps. Okay, so it's kind of hard for me to explain how these work because quite honestly, I don't even know how they work. But I know that it is pulling or it's somehow or another this line here is connected down here and then there's a vapor line that bleeds off down these rows here and it makes it stay cold because you have to meter it as a liquid and not a gas so what we need to do to try and clean this out what i did last year was you take these vapor lines off of here and you take this line off and then you plug one of those and you blow air in the other one and any crap that's in this thing comes flying out the bottom there. At least that's the idea. So we're gonna try that. Well, nothing obvious came flying out of them uh, ports like I kinda <laughs> hoped would, because then I would know what the problem is. But I don't remember anything flying out of them last year when I did that either, so. Um, we're gonna go try it again, see if it works any better. Well, it appears that that has helped out at least quite a bit. We're still not quite locking on to our rate. But that 29 was 30, 32 gallons per minute uh, is far more flow than I have had all day. We were struggling to get to 23 or 24 earlier, so that's good. Must have helped some. Well, my tanks are empty. They're not supposed to be empty. How much do I have left in this field? three acres but I should have had plenty so I'm a little frustrated and confused I'm starting to wonder if maybe I have flow meter issues where my flow meter on the bar is not working right because we're getting it on heavy this is not the first tank today that hasn't gone as far as it's supposed to so clearly I'm getting it on too heavy which is better than too light but uh, we don't want to do that if we don't have to, right? So the question is why, and I don't know. So Phil's bringing me another tank. Brock had to go home. Uh, he's got work tonight, but um, that's frustrating. So we're going to finish this three acres, and then we're going to take it back to the farm and call it. And I don't know, maybe we need to take that flow meter apart and clean it, see if there's any debris in there that's causing it not to spin quite right. Uh, I don't know. I'm at a loss here. All right. Phil brought that tank. Finished the last two and a half acres that I had left there. I also blood the system out again. Third time today. We're going to go back to the farm, take it apart, and look inside that flow meter there. See if we see anything. It could be as simple as we need to recalibrate it, but I can't get any weights today because it's Memorial Day and they're closed. 
and I just don't understand why it would change because I had it dialed in dead on uh, last week and all of a sudden now it's off by 15% that seems strange so I'm not sure what's going on but we're gonna look into it a little more all right we are back here in front of the shop so what we need to do there's a union right here all we got to do is break that apart and uh, it'll slide that way. Everything up top that's attached to that is just sitting there and kind of floating. And this is all flexible rubber hose. So it should slide down and we should be able to get in there and, and see it at least a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't really want to take the whole thing off if I don't have to, but we'll do what we got to do here. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, like I said, break that connection. Take a look. I suppose you guys want to watch, so I better film it. I already had it broke loose. The system is good, so there should not be any pressure in here, but safety first. You guys look in there for me. You probably can't hear me. Tell me what you see. Wait, wait. Nothing. Well, there's the impeller. I don't see anything that would make me concerned, but I have to look a little closer. Well, it's all back together. I really didn't find anything. I blew some air in there. That impeller is spinning freely. Uh, I tried blowing these refrigerant lines out again to see if maybe that would do something, but uh, nothing obvious. So we're gonna go back to the field, the next field. We're gonna try it, see if it works any different. It won't, but we're gonna see. And, uh, and then we're gonna put in a negative 10% um, rate adjust to kind of compensate. We're gonna finish emptying this tank. I got one more full one. We're gonna run that one out and we're gonna do a calibration on it. That way we can take it back first thing tomorrow morning, get a weight and uh, recalibrate our flow meter. That's the only thing left to do really. I just, I don't understand why the calibration number would have changed from the last time we were using it, but that seems to be the only thing left that really could be the issue. All right, back together. Time to go back to the field. The boys came for a visit. Somebody's feeling a little better. We'll go out and say hi to them. You feeling better? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Grandpa's here, so. All right, bud, I gotta go back to the field. You gonna hang out with Grandpa? Or go see Mom? Hang out with Grandpa. Hang out with Grandpa? Okay. Oh, I'm just on the first pass on the ends here. Uh, we're in the 165 rate, and we're getting 28 gallons a minute. I got over almost nine miles an hour. My pressure gauges are higher than they have been at any point today, so uh, so far it looks okay. I don't I don't know that we fixed anything, but at the moment it's working pretty well. We'll see once we get out into the field and some of the higher zones where it's running 190 if it'll hold the rate or not. Well, it's definitely working better. I'm not sure that it's perfect yet, but we are cruising right along here. And uh, the big question is, are we putting the right rate on or are we putting too much on? And we won't really be able to tell that until we get a calibration load in a uh, wasteland. But I don't know. It seems better than it did before, so that's good, right? Well, this tank's got to be about empty. Uh, it doesn't say it's low yet, but we're getting to that point where it would run out before, so uh, maybe we're better. Uh, Dad did bring me another one. He kind of hurt his back in the process, so I had to take him home and brought the truck back, which is fine, because then I can leave the tractor here overnight anyway. But uh, we're going to run out this one, one more tank here tonight. That's the last full one that we have anyway. We're going to run a calibration load, and uh, that way we can take it back in the morning and, and just see what the monitor is saying versus what the scale says and how close we are. Also, we are in that field that we tiled, so I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel every tile line. There's one, back tires, bar, tank, 
tank next to Ally. It's bouncing, so we're going kind of slow because of that. Well, I'm probably too far away from it for you guys to see now, but there are a bunch of flags on the end of this field. So um, if you might remember last year at one of our fields down to Berkey, I did a nitrogen test plot where uh, we used some nitrogen stabilizers, uh, NSERV on part of it, and then used a, a standard rate, 100% rate, and then like a 75% rate uh, with the stabilizer and a 75% rate without the stabilizer. Well, we're gonna do that same thing again in this field this year. And so those flags are marking out where everything goes. So uh, I'm gonna worry about that tomorrow. So I'm gonna jump on the other side of it once we get back to this uh, other end of the field here because the next pass is the first strip in that plot. So I'll talk more about that one tomorrow. Well, my tank ran empty and it says there's 985 pounds in it yet. So our rate is still off. So fortunately I got the weight on this one. We'll take this tank back first thing in the morning, get a weight on it. We'll recalibrate and see if that helps fix our issues. We did get uh, 47 acres done in this field out of the 150. So there's about 93 to go or 140. So there's about 93 to go. We've got that, that plot to do over there. So um, I think the plan is going to be to finish this one here in the morning and then head to Berkey tomorrow. I, that's my tentative plan. Well, we ended up not having too bad of a day. I mean, look at the pile of empty tanks we got sitting around here. Let's see, there's uh, six of them there, plus the one in the field yet. So we went through seven tanks. We did about 175 acres. And uh, aside from our rate issues, it went well. Uh, we did get it on a little bit heavy, except for that last tank, because I adjusted the rate down, so it's more accurate. But um, frustrating. We'll fix it tomorrow. No big deal. It isn't the end of the world. So anyway, thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you all had a great Memorial Day weekend. And um, clean up after my kids. And uh, we'll see you guys again tomorrow. So let's get this anhydrous done. We're getting there. We're over half done. So that's good. Hopefully we'll have a little progress down there on the old construction project this week. I'm not so sure they're coming, but I sure hope so. Brock tells me this morning, hey, your truck needs some fuel. Dude, you think? I hope I can make it to town and back, or to town, to the gas station. <laughs>